Jordy Jordan, better known as Wings of Redemption, is a 33-year-old live streamer whose YouTube origins predate even the most infamous content creators. Once one of the largest and fastest growing content creators out there, has since then crossed paths with the many other titans of YouTube. Though in most cases, these interactions would end poorly for him and his channel, as each interaction in its own way would act as a catalyst that would only serve to accelerate Jordy's downfall. As throughout his online career, he has seen a slew of controversies, from bursting out of rage during a livestream Call of Duty match all while insulting his co-host and threatening the life of his opponent, to more serious aggressions where he would threaten suicide along with threatening the lives of others. This can be attributed to a volatile mix of his ill temper and inconsideration for others. Even with his infamous persona, many fellow content creators would attempt to rejuvenate his dying channel by providing or suggesting different forms of content, but due to his lack of commitment would lead to further failures and finally as he moved on to live streaming, would get notoriety for the various outbursts he would have and would build a community of trolls and make up a large portion of his ever decreasing viewer base. But even still, very few know of his origins, which is where we'll start. Born on April 21st, 1986 in Conway, South Carolina, Jordy Jordan's birth was a result of a teenage pregnancy, where due to his parents' adolescence, he would live with his grandparents in their trailer. And at the age of two, Jordy's alcoholic father would abandon the family. Four years later in 1992, Jordy would experience his first serious injury. While playing baseball with his younger brother, the bat slipped out of his brother's hand, hit Jordy's head, and cracked his skull. He would then be rushed to the hospital where they would perform surgery in order to reduce brain swelling. He would later make a full recovery, though it is unclear if this injury impaired his cognitive abilities. Regardless, he would remain an active child, as one year later in 1993, Jordy was seven years old attending elementary school in the third grade, where due to his fit physique, would excel in physical education as he would always finish top of the class. And that was until an athletic exchange student joined the school which would leave Jordy finishing second place in most events that in turn made him feel awful. As he recalls, this was a turning point in his life where many more mistakes would ensue, as his solution to beating this exchange student was to increase his calorie intake as he thought eating more would excel his growth and in turn make him the better athlete. So he would approach his grandmother for additional servings, and without questioning why, she would always provide the food. He would then slowly start the transition from a thin active child to an isolated obese one. He would also develop a sort of bow-leggedness where his knees would remain far apart even when standing up, and as his school years progressed, he would be made fun of and struggle to make friends. So he would retreat into video games as he could no longer viably compete in sports. Jordy, his brother and his mother, would soon move into Section 8 housing, which is a low-income housing for those in need, also known as the Projects. During this time, he would be given an identification card as many children were getting kidnapped in the area that he lived in. Fast forward to high school, Jordy was a 6 foot tall, 240 pound troubled teenager and would be taken to a psychologist where he would be diagnosed with bipolar disorder and social phobia. Being that he suffered from these conditions, he was mostly kept to himself. That was until freshman year where he would meet his first true friend, Kelly. He would then be introduced to Dungeons and Dragons and develop a small group of friends. It was also around this time where he would get his second serious injury, as one day after coming home from school, someone was trying to break into his mother's car. Jordy then shouted at the burglar, which startled him and caused him to flee. And while doing so, he would fire his gun at Jordy, striking him once in the leg. And again, he would make a full recovery. He would then begin working at a grocery store where his main tasks were to relabel products and clean the store shelves. Though because of the repetitive nature and the boredom that Jordy would have during this job, he would quit just two weeks after being hired. He would then find work at a video rental store known as the Movie Gallery, where his most memorable experience there would be an armed robbery by a trio of armed assailants. After this, and approaching the end of high school, he would work as a Domino's delivery driver where again, while delivering a pizza to an apartment complex in a low-income side of town, he would take the butt of a shotgun to his back, subsequently knocking him on the floor where the assailants would pick his pockets and take $20 from him. He would also be suspended from his job due to an altercation with the area supervisor. He would then graduate high school and look for work elsewhere, where he would then be hired as a 911 operator. But again, due to his poor work ethic, will leave this job after only two weeks of employment. His fifth and final job was one he took seriously. At around the age of 19, Jordy would begin employment at Meklas Incorporated, a factory that specializes in producing an amorphous metal known as Meklas. 
mainly in the form of courts, and was funded through various contractors, the largest one being from China, that used these courts in assembling power line transformers, as at the time, China was redoing its electrical system. In the factory itself, Jordy would go through working in various positions, one of which was a crane operator, where he would be earning around $25 an hour, working 12-hour shifts, 5 days a week, which adds up to $6,000 a month. He would stay at this job for an estimated 3 years, where the only thing that he would do outside of work was sleep, eat, and play video games. That was until the stock market crash of 2007. Now banks were more cautious to who they lent their money to, and being that most of the funding for Meklas was done through loans taken out by these Chinese companies meant that instead of ordering Meklas in bulk as they had two years worth of back orders, they would instead purchase significantly smaller amounts of the product until depleted then order a small amount again. This would lead to employees averaging 3 hour workdays and have the company eventually laying off the majority of their workforce, which included Jordy. Though for most, this was a temporary layoff as they stated that they will call these employees back if production had picked up again, leaving Jordy once again unemployed. But this time, he'll qualify for unemployment, meaning that he will get paid a fraction of what he used to make to sustain him while he looked for another job. Which through this, his friend Z7 Taylor would introduce him to YouTube, as he would help with the production of videos and try to figure out the best way to upload videos to the site. The content of these videos being from one of his favorite games at the time, Call of Duty World at War. Both Jordy and Taylor had purchased a Dazzle capture card, but only Taylor would upload videos on his channel with the footage obtained by it. Jordy would instead go an alternate route and spend $200 for a hop-aged HD PVR that would allow him to record in high definition. And after seeing the attention Taylor had gotten and reading his viewers' comments, he then decided to begin uploading videos of his own. And on October 1st, 2009, Jordy's first video would be uploaded under his channel name, Wings of Redemption. The name is inspired by the encryption on King Tut's tomb that reads, quote, Death shall come on swift wings to whoever disturbs the peace of the Pharaoh, unquote. Or Wings of Redemption, as described by Jordy, is the antithesis of this, as he explains, just as death comes fast, so can redemption, and that you can change your life around at any given time, which is possibly how he saw his channel. And it wasn't until his third video, 23 days after the release of his first video, that he would start adding commentary over his videos. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, yeah, hi again, this is my first commentary, and here we go. From here, he'll begin uploading consistently, and being that there were a minuscule amount of gameplay videos on YouTube and even fewer commentators meant that Wings' video easily stood out from the rest, especially for those that had the bandwidth to view them in the higher resolution that he offered. As within a month, he had accumulated over 1,000 subscribers. He also got another break as a fairly large commentator known as Hutch Is Yo Daddy would give a shout out to Taylor's channel, boosting his subscriber count from 4,000 to 10,000, and with Jordy's association with Taylor, he would quadruple his sub count. All this happening in less than a month's time. Though Wing's channel would see a healthy growth and positive community feedback, it wouldn't take long for him to stumble upon his first controversy where in a now deleted video, he would denounce Hutch's Yodaddy's tactic of quick scoping with sniper rifles in game, as he would point out the impossibility of such a technique working in a real life scenario and that it wasn't realistic nor how the game should be played. But viewers would be quick to defend Hutch and point out several flaws in Wing's own techniques such as how in a good portion of his videos, he would camp or stay in one spot while aiming down his sights so when an enemy approached him, he would have an overwhelming advantage towards the opposing player. Wings and Hutch would also have a debate about this, each defending their playstyle, where Hutch would state that Wings was undeserving of the hate he was getting, though this would do little to suppress the slow-growing hatred for Wings. Regardless, his channel would continue to grow exponentially, catching the eyes of Machinima an exclusive network partnered with YouTube that allowed content creators to earn a revenue from their videos. Four months later, Wings of Redemption had accumulated 48,000 subscribers and would begin to diversify his content by including videos of other games or random vlog or review. He had also collaborated with various different content creators within the Call of Duty community, most notably FPS Kyle, later known as FPS Russia, and Woody's Gamertag and one day when talking in Skype, they would decide their conversations would be fitting for a podcast, as there were many lingering podcasts mostly focusing on Call of Duty and the gameplay. But their approach to a podcast would be slightly different than the rest, as they would transition from doing pre-recorded shows to later streaming it on Justin TV, later known as Twitch TV. They also wouldn't limit themselves to gaming and would conversate about any given topic, generally with a special guest star, usually another content creator, to spice things up. This podcast would give insight to the personal ongoings of each of the host's lives, such as Wings' arsenal. 
I have 46 weapons, and most some of them are fully automatic. Well, mine are t- to shoot the cats that come in the backyard, but I didn't really want to Mine are too. <laughs> I don't actually hit any of them. This podcast would also uncover the depths of Wings' ill temper. And that was my rage story. But Wings, you're clearly going to win this. 18 PS3 controllers, three <laughs> Xbox controllers, two TVs, one keyboard, one handgun. <laughs> oh, God, you and broke a, a handgun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I live in a double-wide trailer, and basically what we did was we cemented the foundation and put the footers into the cement and then bricked under the house and made brick porches. Well, I got mad, and I... I didn't want to, because this just happened after I busted a TV. I busted like a 32-inch uh, HD TV. I just kicked my foot right through it. And uh, so I grabbed this high point handgun, which I had right at the time, and I took the clip out and I threw it. <laughs> and then I got went out on the porch and I just spiked the shit because I was still mad. And the shit just went in pieces. It warped the frame of the gun. All this. He was well known at the time, mostly in the creator community, for becoming irate to the slightest provocation in video games where he would usually blame any shortcomings on his team. And when playing privately with Wings, a poor performance could result with you being shouted at by him and then being deleted from his friends list, something that he had done with all his PS3 friends that he obtained pre-YouTube. As for the ones he couldn't easily throw away, such as other content creators, he would instead abruptly leave the game and cut contact until he had calmed down. Few users would learn about this and try to befriend him, which would lead to a buildup of various videos all with the same goal, but addressed in different ways. That being how he tries to discourage his viewers from messaging him, attempting to add him on their PlayStation friends list, and attempt to join his Call of Duty session in progress. These videos, of course, would have the opposite of its intended effect and possibly give more attention to the problem. This was not the only shortcoming he had with trying to connect with his community, as by August 5th, 2010, he had blocked a total of 11,000 viewers from his channel, meaning they could not comment or view his videos. And to give some perspective on how large this number really was, he had about 90,000 subscribers at the time, meaning that one-tenth of his possible subscribers would belittle him in some way. It was also around this time that he would receive his first paycheck after seven months of being partnered with Machinima, and a hefty one at that, which would lead him to turn down a job offering from his previous employer, Mechlass. Moving on to 2011, with his newfound wealth, he would begin making plans for a weight loss surgery, and within the podcast, there would be the first mention of a weight loss boot camp for Wings. Wings, um, you know that, well, everybody knows that you've been considering, uh, is it laparoscopic surgery? I mean, I, I have that wrong. Lap the band, band. surgery. Lap band Lap surgery. Band. Thank you. Lap band surgery. Uh, what, I, what I'm doing right now is I'm on a low-carb diet where uh, I basically eat like a lot of eggs, chicken, and meat. Um, but I'm going to the doctor Saturday. Uh, his name's Dr. Norman, and uh, he's here in Myrtle Beach. Um, and I'm basically going to be giving what you call a V12 shot. And what it is is a shot they put into your stomach. It's a big old long needle. Nice. And um, it increases your metabolism. And there's a set of pills that go on there and just you kind of keep like perks you up and keeps your metabolism going, keeps your heart rate up to try to make your body a furnace full time to b- burn fat faster. I'll tell you what you need, Wings. You need a, tr- a personal trainer, a Russian personal trainer. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> if only I knew a guy. Yeah, that's like- Russian needs to be in it and he needs to be like whipping you from behind. You need to be like running up hills with that bad boy. <laughs> And three weeks later, a mention of a wilderness survival trip. I heard someone wants to take a sleeping bag, a twenty two rifle, and some flint to go survive out in the wilderness. Magnesium. Um, it's easier than flint. Uh huh, magnesium's the way to go. At this time, things will be going pretty great for Wings, as in April this year, he will meet Shalene, his first serious girlfriend that he had met from the dating site Plenty of Fish, and will later have her and her two kids move out of her mom's house and into his modular trailer where Wings would support the entire family, as Wings had convinced Shalene to quit her job and find one closer to his trailer, but she never did. And a month after they met, he would be browsing one of his local stores when he came across a donation box where the funds would go towards affording a hyperbaric oxygen treatment for a high school student suffering with cerebral palsy. And as the donation box had very little money donated to it, Wings felt that with his status, he could change that, and would contact the coordinators of this charity and promise them that he could get $10,000 if he uploaded a video for this cause. So he did, leaving a link in the description of this video where viewers could donate money towards the charity. 
and within three weeks, $8,000 had been raised, where Wings would donate the remaining $2,000 out of pocket. This, for the most part, would win over his fanbase and he would seek out further charitable events that he could participate in, though this love for him would not last long. And that's because of Painkiller Already, Episode 67. Episode 67 had the highest ranked Call of Duty Zombies player at the time, The Syndicate Project, on as a guest. At first, this podcast went like any other. They would open with strange yet comedic topics, but when it got to talking about Syndicate and his strategies in Call of Duty Zombies, an area that Wings had very little experience in, things got a bit heated, as Wings would begin to trivialize the zombie game mode and claim that the multiplayer game mode was superior due to there being players to compete against and not AI. He would also claim that he was a superior Zombies player, even with his little experience in the game mode, and that he could easily compete with the Syndicate project. But as the realization came in that they could easily set this up, he would attempt to stop it while keeping his pride intact by citing such a competition could last for hours. Something not viable for a podcast. Call of Duty 4, in my opinion, is, it was the easiest to do well on. Dog, it's like crushing my game that I love. Like, I, it is. I, could, I, could I mean, get, I, 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 I could get beat down by really good players. I, per, I personally, myself, I'm I am a very good player on the stick. <laughs> and you know what else? He's uh, modest. Uh, there's no reason to be <laughs> humble. It's like I know I'm a good player. My stats prove it. See, I'm to me, say this. you're talking to a guy who's probably four times the multiplayer that, than you are. Yeah, and we're you about and, and, at no matter. It doesn't matter. There's no, no okay, difference. I'll do this. I bet you're you, talking I bet to you a guy right, who's four I bet times you right the zombie now, player you are. I bet yeah. you right now I could get on zombies and stay toe for toe with Tom and not even know the fucking map. Let's stream You know it. why? Oh, let's do it. Oh, baby. yeah. There you it is. Why, you know, you know why I can do this? Because I use my brain. I think, well, where's my back at? Oh, okay. yeah. Let's show it. I can... That's why I'm not about to go. I'm not about to get on to play six time. hours. What? You are not going to play thing. six hours anyway. For as long as they can anyway. And after a bit more debating to which was a superior game mode, they would settle for a duel and multiplayer instead, which was of course Wings' area of expertise, where he would select the map and the choice of weapons that was to be used. He would also have a warm-up round with another member of the podcast while Syndicate was setting up his Xbox. And once everything was set, the match would begin. With Wings scoring the first few kills, and it seemed things were going in his favor, until he started dying, several times in a row. This made things much more difficult for Wings, as his strategy consisting of staying in one spot and camping would no longer work. Now being that the game was timed, he had to leave his camping spot to aggressively rush Syndicate in hopes to tip the scale before the time ran out, though this had very little success. And with each additional death, Wings would get ever more furious until the tension of his silence was interrupted by a loud thump. You know, like, commentator showdown goes on. I knew that was a tough lobby to do well in, but I was there. Wings, did you spawn in? I'm, I broke my controller. You broke your controller? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep f***ing laughing, you f***ing it. Oh, Wings, I think you're right. Oh, I know it's oh don't f*** suck. Okay. Yeah, we've all been there, man. Fuck you. Me? Why the fuck you stream that shit? It was your idea. It should be noted that right after the live stream had ended, Wings would threaten Syndicate's life. This was for some, their turning point for Wings of Redemption. Some people even going as far as to re-upload the entire match, and others highlighting specific sections such as Wings breaking his controller. This would become one of the most memorable moments in the Call of Duty community. That same day, he would upload a video trying to defend his actions, which only brought more attention to the match. His following videos would get mass disliked where the dislikes well outnumber the likes, and a good portion of the comments would be a reference to the match. Even the few live streams that he did on Justin TV would be clipped and recorded as he would have outbursts of rage not unlike what happened during the match with Syndicate. There would also be an attempt of a rematch where someone had offered $5,000 to the victor. Wings would then contact Syndicate asking him to take a dive for a share of the money, but Syndicate would decline the match and this conversation will later be leaked by Syndicate. Jordy, I gotta deal with you. I got Alki David willing to put up 5,000 USD. Syndicate, dot dot dot. Jordy, 
You get 3,000, I get 2,500, but I have to come out on top. 2,000. Sounds like a good deal, or want no part of it. Syndicate. No, not at all. I'm not taking part of that. Jordy. It's free money. Syndicate. I'd rather earn my money. Jordy. Well, I need this kind of money. I don't make $2,500 a day. Syndicate. It's regardless of the money. You want to come out on top on the situation. You just made it 10 times worse. Jordy, I got a family to feed, so money is a big deal to me. You said you wanted to bury the hatchet. What better way? We both make money, and I beat you like one kill in game 5. It's 1,000 bucks to lose a game you're not expected to win. I'd figured I'd offer it. Syndicate, no wings. You blew up big style. Syndicate has left. Though still, over the course of two months, the fallout of the match would gradually slow down where things would almost revert to how they were before. And things for Wings were still going fairly well. He was earning over $10,000 a month from his machinima contract and used a large portion of that to provide for his girlfriend and her children. That was until they broke up on March 8th of 2012, where we would later find out he had spent an estimated $80,000 to support them. As over the course of the relationship, he would purchase an SUV for her to drive, pay rent, utilities, pay for her daughter's dance lessons, and various other amenities. But five months after this, he would begin seeing Brandy, a woman he had met again on Plenty of Fish. Though, he would be more cautious about spending money on her because his channel began to stagnate at 400,000 subscribers, and as he began getting lower view counts, consequently, his paychecks would also get smaller. He would begin looking for a new form of content, and what he ended up deciding was long-form content, where instead of uploading several low-effort videos a day, he would take his time editing long-form high-quality videos. And the trial run for this was his 100 million total views celebration video. It would take him three days of editing to put this together. But due to its poor editing and failure to portray a clear narrative, it would well underperform and would get the same amount of views as any other video. He would then go out to Twitter where he would tweet about ending his life and how difficult being him was. Many content creators would chime in on this, the most memorable being El Presidor who would call out Wings for falsely threatening to commit suicide, something that Wings had done many times before. Wings would respond by tweeting, quote, I've got a lot of guns, El Presidor, and if I decide to kill myself, I'm taking you with me. Unquote. Keemstar would then uncover this and bring Wings of Redemption and several other commentators onto his podcast, where it would turn into a sort of intervention for Wings. Wings, it's been kind of, uh, it's kind of been you versus the world tonight. No, uh, it's always me versus the world, dude. It's been like that for the last three years of my career. I'm pretty much the world then. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much, you know, you know, Scarface of the YouTube community. I'm the bad guy. I'm the okay. camper. I'm the, I'm everything that personifies <laughs> everything bad. Not say that, Wings. You were the Scarface of the YouTube community. Wings, why do you? I, I, okay, listen, Wings. Sometimes we, as human beings, we just have to look down when things are tough and look at what we have. I know I'm sounding like a Hallmark card. What right do I now. have, Keemstar? I have a night full of drama. You, I have you, El Presidor trying to get big off me by threatening to put the FBI must, on me. But, but I listen, have one of the biggest listen, channels listen. in the gaming on YouTube trying to shut me down while just, I'm having one of the worst months of my fucking life. What do I have? Wings, think about what you just said. You said that you have El Presidor trying to get big off of you. Now, do you really believe? Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that? El Presidor is a fucking leech. That's what no, no, no. But what I'm saying is, if if El Presidor is really just trying to get big off you. That is an awesome thing. That's a compliment. It's not it? an awesome thing. It hits you all at once, dude. Have you ever... Well, you probably have. Well, you got to look remember. at it glass half full, glass half empty. You have so much, and people in this community, you know, look up to you. All right? They, they do. They do. People in the community actually look up to Wings. Wings has been around for, for forever. And as much as people battle with, with you, people do respect you. You know, and admire you. Look at how many people tune into PKA. No offense to Woody, but if you were out of it, it'd be probably like half the people there. You know what I mean? You got to think about what you have. You put up life advice videos and people actually listen. They take your advice. You know, I mean, sometimes you just have to look at your life, look at what you have. I've had so many different hats that I put on where you wings, you've kind of just been the same guy for like five years. You know what I mean? Maybe it's time to reinvent yourself. And, and, I, and, and the reason why I say this, don't change, but reinvent yourself. Yeah, because you uploaded the video and you were like, I don't know what to do with my channel anymore. Like, if I if I get into drama, you know, I get views, uh, but if I just upload a gameplay, I only get 10,000. So maybe 
maybe there needs to be a wings talk show. Maybe there needs to be a wings in real life thing. Maybe there needs to be something different, like reinvent yourself, you know? After this podcast, Wings would not take the advice of his colleagues and continue to upload the same style of content with a slight increase of his vlog videos. But his decreasing viewer count wouldn't be the only problem, as come January 2013, Machinima would abruptly drop him from the network, and instead of partnering directly with YouTube because he feared the lack of support that such a massive company would have, he instead opted with partnering with Full Screen Entertainment at a much lower pay than Machinima offered. And possibly due to his lack of motivation, his video uploads would slow down. Instead of uploading three videos a day, he would now upload one, or on occasion, one every three days which would cause his monthly views to dip from an average of 3 million in 2012 to 1.5 million in June. It was this month that Brandy would break up with him, prompting the creation of this now deleted video. And I can't afford to go get another girlfriend because I can't afford to take people out right now because I'm pretty much making no money every, every month's the red. This is why, this is why I bitch on Twitter all the time. This is why people see me as a sad person. I just feel so alone. He would then create the one of many videos talking about how he wants to quit YouTube and go back to school, and how he doesn't like making videos for YouTube nor playing Call of Duty, and the only reason he does it is for money. With his podcast co-host seeing this, they would continue to try to find ways to rejuvenate his channel, which then prompted the proposition for the FPS poop camp. FPS Kyle invites Wings over to his house and offers to be his personal trainer for 30 days, with the end goal being to lose 50 pounds and create a mini-series of videos all recorded and edited by Kyle to be uploaded to Wings of Redemption, where to Kyle's surprise, Wings would agree to do it. And to fund it, they set up an Indiegogo fund that would end up raising upwards of $9,000. This would be spent on remodeling Kyle's bathroom to accommodate Wings, the meals and equipment that was to be used, and the remaining amount to hire a personal trainer for post-bootcamp workouts. And after the date was set and the bathroom was remodeled, Wings would arrive to Cal's residence on October 28, 2013 and would be placed on a 1,000 calorie a day diet. The workouts would begin the following day and consist of random activities that were meant to keep his heart rate up. And within the first two weeks of this, he had lost 25 pounds, though he would feel that he hit a plateau and want to quit. So that week on PKA, after discussing this, this will become a kind of intervention where the host would cite the newfound support of his fans and how his channel had seen a tremendous growth with the bootcamp videos he's been uploading. We've got all these people here trying to help you, Wings. We're smashing this, our you, heads. This, we're working on hour two of you telling me the same thing. Well, when are you going to get know, it's sad. your dumbass fucking skull that we are trying to help you? There are tens of thousands of people out there that are rooting for you and all you can do is sit there and say eh, can't be bothered so he will continue onward and lose another 20 pounds where he will then leave to attend thanksgiving with his family he would then begin taking walks to maintain his weight and once all the indiegogo money had gone through he would then hire drew a personal trainer that would help him with lifestyle changes and would somewhat befriend him but this will not last so long now in 2014, Drew had been hired by a local gym where he had grandfathered in his clients, but shortly after, he would be fired from the gym for breaking gym protocol by sleeping with one of his clients, leaving Wings without a personal trainer as Drew was trying to figure out what direction to take. And meanwhile on PKA, while talking about survival shows such as Man vs. Wild and Survivor Man, the idea of a 5-day wilderness survival trip will come to fruition, with the attending members being Wings, Woody, Kyle, and another member of the podcast known as Lefty. But Lefty would be quick to back out before the plans were set in stone, leading to Wings insulting him and essentially calling him a coward. And on March 28th, while talking on PKA, they had set the Uwari Wilderness in North Carolina as the location, and set the date from April 14th to the 18th. Though through this conversation, our reluctant Wings would attempt to seemingly find any excuse to cancel the trip. But with the encouragement of Woody and Kyle, he had agreed to the date of the trip. Well, I'm. I am. My my birthday is April twenty first, and I am not going any time before that. Wait, why? I've never heard of anyone f***ing celebrating a birth month before. Birth month. Yeah. Who ever yeah, heard man. of a birth month? Women. My, my birthday going. is May. First night. off, I still need to practice. Twenty second. Like, I mean, like, I don't have all my stuff. My boots are in the f mail. I don't even have pants. 
look, we're talking about doing this in 16, in 17 days, 18 days from now. That's what we're just, what we just talked about. It was on Prime. And you're like, my boots are still in the mail, man. I've got to get more skills. <laughs> I was always under the impression it was going to be beginning of May. Dude, let's do this. Let's do this. April 14th, wait, 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 don't wait. say no. Don't puss out. Don't be a sissy. Don't why be can't a we loser. Do what, 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 be a why, winner. Why, make why, a why thing you, happen. Why are you against May? You want to live an extraordinary... Because May is the distant future. You want to live an extraordinary life. You want to do extraordinary things. Then you find out how to make them go. I watched the Painkiller Already subreddit. And they're like, man, a lot of these guys would really like to do this. A lot of, Like, man, I would like to do this thing. I would, there's a reason not a lot of people do this. And it's because they're wired to figure out reasons why they can't do it. Why they shouldn't do I'm it. I'm not backing out. I'm the last person who's going to back out. Each of the attendants will begin making videos to hype up the survival trip and bring more exposure to it. They would present the gear they were going to bring and explain its uses, as well as showcasing the talents and techniques they had picked up in preparation for the trip. But when it came to Wings, he had purchased very little compared to the other two and preparation videos had very little in terms of information or how he had been preparing for the trip. And as April 13th rolled over, both Woody and Kyle would begin driving to a town located near the wilderness area, and while on the road, Kyle would call Wings to check if he had arrived. Where in Kyle's surprise, Wings would state he was not going. He then calls Woody to try to convince Wings, but with no luck, as Wings had come to the conclusion that he was not going to attend two days before, but had failed to inform anyone. Alright, so... I don't know, we were about 40 miles in earlier, now we are... like 100 and... 62 miles into this trip and uh, I was just I texted Wings of Redemption and I said uh, I'm not gonna pretty much verbatim I said hey buddy uh, are we still on for tomorrow because keep in mind it's 11 p.m. right now we're supposed to meet at the uh, the, the bait shop at 8 30 a.m. so you know nine hours from right now and uh, and I also included, you know, and also do you have everything you need? Because I've got extras of a lot of things. And his response was basically, I'm not coming. He will then go on to upload two videos addressing why he did not go, with his excuses being that due to his weight, he would drag the party down, and the trip itself was dangerous, as all members had very little wilderness survival experience. With the second video being titled, Why Do You Never Apologize? where he explains just that. Both videos would have their dislike bar disabled and would be bombarded with comments rebutting his argument and excuses. As for Kyle and Woody, they would only spend one day in the wilderness before Kyle became violently ill, possibly through the intake of lake water. So they would return home one day after arrival, where then the existing members of the podcast would vote to kick Wings off due to his lack of commitment. And yet again, Wings would be condemned for his actions, with many viewers unsubscribing from his channel and leaving a sizable amount of dislikes on his future videos. He would then, almost exactly one month later, begin walking 365, a video series where an attempt to maintain his weight would walk 4 miles daily while recording it. He would progressively win over his viewer base as he seemed committed to this venture. That was, until day 79 where he had a moment weakness and had gained 6 pounds over the course of a week. But not all was bad as 8 days later, Drew had contacted him and offered to train him for free, which he would gladly accept and he would take him on not so much as a personal trainer, but sort of a friend and a lifestyle coach. Now 2015, along with his traditional content, he would begin to upload videos of him working out with Drew, and seeing how Jordy interacted with a friend instead of a random person online did shine a different light on him and brought the best of his personality out. As for the community interaction, his viewers almost unanimously adored Drew, since he had a good impact on Jordy's life and they had a great chemistry together. He would also rarely post on YouTube as he was beginning to transition to Twitch, and through his streams, we learned that he was still struggling both mentally and physically. Uh, <laughs> so let's see Wings. Um, his highs are, are nice and high, right? He's working with Drew, he's, he's enjoying weightlifting, which is a cool thing. He hasn't really enjoyed any workout prior to that. He, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, those are his highs. Uh, on the... <laughs> 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 On the downside, um, his financial situation continues to to head worse, right? Like, and he stopped working basically. So he, you know, his job, of course, is to make YouTube videos. And what has he made? Like maybe three in the last month. Yeah, he's living off his savings. Um, so he's gaining weight. He's losing money. And um, he was on a Twitch stream. So th as I as we say this, this is maybe like five days ago. I'm guessing. Um, he said he, you know, his plan was still to 
keep doing what he's doing until he runs out of money and then murder him. Um, it, not murder himself. Suicide. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> and then uh, he was going to kill himself. A few months after this, we will learn he stopped his workout sessions with Drew. And due to all his failings, he will not begin 2016 strong. Where he would once average 50,000 views a video, he was now getting one-tenth of that. He would also be back up to 450 pounds, the same weight he was prior to the FPS bootcamp. We would also see the small buildup of trolls around his channel starting this year, kicking it off with this semi-viral clip. I had 600, or I had almost 700 on the COD remastered, man. Like, I hate Call of Duty. I hate it, dude. It fucking ruined my life. I hate everything about it. Over the course of a year, more of these would surface. Twitch was now his primary source of income where he was earning an estimated $5,000 a month. And with this money, he would announce that he would begin to save up for a weight loss surgery in Mexico. And depending on which surgery he would pick, the trip, the hotel, and the recovery process would cost him an estimated $8,000, which was his earning goal. And because he was streaming more often to make money for the surgery, the amount of clips of Wings losing his temper would grow exponentially. With the first large rage compilation being released on August of 2017 by user 6 ms This would bring a lot more attention to Wings, and in turn, more viewers for his streams that came from other communities such as those of Chris Chan and Darkside Phil, where the outrageousness of the personalities would become a sort of spectacle and for the most part made them an easy target to troll for a reaction. And so they did, by doing what Wings hated the most. And that was joining a session and team killing, which on November 15th would produce this clip that would again go viral and would give his streams mass attention. I don't know when I'll stream again. I really need to make this fucking money. I really wanted to get this fucking surgery, man. I wanted it so fucking bad. <laughs> I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. All I wanted to do was, like, I was fucking lonely. I wanted to just stream and have a good time. Maybe have a good game. <laughs> A day later would be the birth of Sean Ranklin, the most successful highlight channel, or as Wings likes to call them, troll channel. And with his first video, and over the course of a couple months, he would have accumulated over 1.3 million views, far surpassing even Wings' top viewed video. This birthed many memes from his livestream, or rather triggers, such as Real Talk. Like, why are you doing this to me? Real, real Talk, why? Look here, listen. Look here. Look here! Look, listen! Appearing offline does not fucking stop it. So stop giving fucking advice you know nothing about. Ban anyone for X reason. Wilson, I don't talk to anybody. Quit asking me about my motherfucking life. You ask me about my life one more goddamn time, you get the perma ban. We're at the point where if you mention Fortnite, you get banned. Ban Lardmuff, by the way. You're supposed to ban anybody that wants to sit here and criticize my skill. I'll ban Star Destroyer 24, dude. I don't suck at World War II either. Shock Steve. Alright. Shock Steve, here it is. I'm gonna download Fortnite, Shock Steve. If I don't reach 520 subscribers within two hours, I'm perma banning you. Uh, ban anybody that knows what I said. Finger sniffing his love for Wendy's Chili, and various others that would garner attention in the following months. As for the progression of his surgery, he had chosen the gastric sleeve surgery, a surgery that removes 85% of the stomach, leaving about 4 ounces of food to be consumed at any given time. And in order to travel to Mexico, he would need a long-form version of his birth certificate, which would take 6-8 to eight weeks to arrive. Though many viewers and content creators saw this as him trying to delay the surgery or him trying to make excuses as to not get the surgery. One of these people being Keemstar, which Wings has had a long history starting back in 2010 after a dispute they had on Keem's podcast when pretending to go off air, Wings would somewhat threaten him by a doxing. Oh, I got you here, D. Can we stop recording now? Yeah, we're done. All right. Well, I got you, DJ King. So I run some stuff by you. Is your PO box one forty eight Holland, New York fourteen oh eight? That's Zero? correct. That's correct. Is your street address now? York fourteen oh eight oh nine seven zero two. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. Right. I it... don't. I don't give my my personal where I live at. I don't give that out. Um. Is your girlfriend named Melissa or Flack? 
Yes, she is. Is her phone number 716-8263? Okay. Can I ask you why you're trying to get my personal information? Well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to see how much of this is correct because I, I gave some of this information to fisticuffs. You gave, you gave my personal information to fisticuffs. And later, when Wings was doing walking 365, Keemstar tried to expose Wings for walking less than he claimed. Later, leading to Wings saying on live stream that he wishes death upon Keemstar. And every, and I've seen how terrible of a person he could be. I'm dead serious. Like if somebody deserved to die on this planet, Daniel Keem would be one of them. I'm not, that's not that's dead serious. Like if if you wanted to do Sharia law, Daniel Keem should be one of the first people to die and have his hands chopped off. He's a despicable person, and that is word. Word to your mother truth right there. This would lead to Keemstar wanting to do a live debate with Wings, to which he refused. And to get his attention, Keemstar threatened to have Wings' Twitch channel suspended for inciting violence, or rather wishing death upon him, so Wings would finally accept the debate. And during their conversation, Keemstar would offer to pay Wings $25,000 that would go towards Wings getting the surgery in America instead of Mexico as long as he would box him one year later. I mean, like, if you were so worried about me having it done in Mexico, why don't you donate the $25,000 so I can have it done right here in Conway? All right, deal. If I donate the $25,000 to have it done in Conway and you survive, okay, then you have to box me a year after the surgery. Hmm. But Wings would decline this because he was afraid of getting a head injury, which he was more susceptible to due to his injury as a child. That end, he had already made enough money to afford the surgery in Mexico. Again, this would bring more hate to Wings as not only did he decline another opportunity to revive his channel, but it also looked like he was making excuses to not have the surgery done. He would then announce that he was instead saving up for the surgery to be done in America instead of Mexico for safety reasons. But to get the surgery done in America, he would have to lose 50 pounds, which he would fail to do. This seemed to be yet another delay on his surgery. It was also around this time that he would post his final YouTube video, updating his viewers on the progress he had made with the surgery. And to everyone's surprise, on April 28, 2018, he had posted screenshots of himself in Tijuana where he had just gotten the surgery. The community in this belief would only later find proof in Wing's ever slimming figure. They would also find his moments of rage, although present, would see a decrease as he would begin taking Lexapro, a drug used to treat depression and generalized anxiety disorder. Now in 2019, his diet might seem to be in shambles as rumors have spread that he has been eating twice his recommended daily calorie intake. Not only this, but his spending of his leftover surgery money is questionable. Though overall, he has to some improved as he claims to be sitting at around 300 pounds, though the evidence is still lacking, as current day 2019, he refuses to show his weight on the scale. Regardless, he remains a spectacle, with viewers watching and categorizing every stream until the moment he breaks. Whether we'll see true improvement is in the hands of time. He may yet see his redemption.